Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today's video is the V-necked cardigan. You have no idea how long this has taken me to get this video out for you guys. There are three different versions. There is the plain V-neck. It is also available in long sleeves so don't panic. You can put long sleeves on this. You've got the basic V-neck so you've got like this. This is not a button up version tutorial. If you would like a button up version tutorial I will put the link for that in the description box. It is on the other cardigan that we make and you put the buttons along the side here so it's the same process. So this version, in this tutorial you will see a plain v-neck like this. There is a kimono style so it's a crossover at the front and there's also a version with a fold over collar and it comes all the way down. It's got about, we can make it as wide as you want, but mine's about four inches wide and it kind of just hangs down. I'm going to insert some video of this that's actually at the end of this video, but I'll insert it at the beginning so you can see it as well uh, and you'll see the style of that one. I've also got a short, a three quarter sleeve version. So it's basically adding the long sleeve onto it, but you only make it up to your elbows. So there's all different ways you can mix up this cardigan. I personally love it. This version at the moment has not got the edging on the sleeves. That's why it looks a little bit too big for me. I think this is really cool. It's just plain. There's, it's not, like I said, not a button up version. It's just a version that you just chuck it on and you, yeah, it's really great. I have the colored version which I will put on now. This one is using Red Heart Super Saver. We are using Red Heart Super Saver throughout the project and the video tutorial. This is the Aran colour. The crossover version is... I don't actually know the colour of that one. I will put it across the screen so you can see. This is the crossover version. I have worked an edging on the sleeve of this one. Which one is it? I've worked the edging on this sleeve. You can see there it's a little bit tighter than the other sleeve. I'm hoping that shows up. It is, I can feel. It is a little bit tighter than the other sleeve. It just brings it in that little bit. And this is the crossover version. And cross it over like that. And I'm not going to show you how to tie it up at the moment. But it ties at the back. Let's see if I can do that so it actually looks good. There we go. And it crosses over at the back. This one has not been blocked yet, that's why it's looking a little bit stiff. So that's really cool. And you've also got this version which is using King Cole Riot. This is about an 8 ply yarn. This one, I'm saying, has the design element of 3 quarter sleeves. But the truth is, I ran out of yarn. <laughs> But I wear this one all the time and every time I wear it, oops, every time I wear it I get compliments on how nice it looks and I think it's the co colour of the yarn that really gets the compliment because it's really pretty. So yeah. So this is an 8 ply uh, which is a light worsted weight yarn or a DK yarn and the other ones are using worsted weight or a 10 ply yarn. It can be made in 4-ply. I also have a 4-ply version I'm working on at the moment, which is not finished. But I have a 4-ply, which is a 4-ply Australian weight yarn, which I think is fingering weight yarn in the US. So it works up really lovely in fingering weight yarn, it works lovely in DK yarn, and it also works up in 10-ply and worsted weight yarn. So it's a great pattern. There's also a free written pattern for this one. It's located on my website and I will put the link that you need in the description box below. It could also be to the side here somewhere. Just depends what you're watching the, the video on. It's an easy project. As long as you know your basic stitches, you'll need to know single crochet and double crochet. And you will need to know how to read a pattern. The pattern isn't intense. It's not a hard pattern to read. I will read it along with you in the video. So if you've never re read a pattern before, it probably might be a great idea to start with this project. You are going to need to take some measurements. I walk you step by step through that in the video. You need to take measurements around a neck on a t-shirt and um, armhole depth. It's going, to, it's going to teach you quite a lot in this video. And 
and you'll need to know a little bit about increasing. So I would say this is sort of an advanced beginner. You don't want to be right at the start, but then you you don't really need many skills for this project. So all I can say is watch the video and if it's your first time sort of making something like a garment, watch the video to understand how it's put together. I bought this pattern in person to a few ladies and they were shocked on how easy it was to do to get a garment from this pattern. So I'm going to stop talking and let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies I'm going to use Red Heart Super Saver. I am trying to bust my stash at the moment and I do have a lot of Red Heart Super Saver so I'm going to be using this. And this is a worsted weight yarn. It's also equivalent to about an Aran or a 10 ply yarn. These are 200 gram balls or about 7 ounces and you've got your meterage over here. It recommends a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and that is what I am going to be using is a 5.5. This is also a eye size crochet hook. I have loose tension and I normally use a H or a 5 mil crochet hook. You want to use one size bigger than what you would normally use for the yarn that you're going to use for the project. This is the Aran color. It's just a cream. And that's what I'm going to be using for this project. For my size, which is the smallest size, I am an Australian lady size 10 and I think that's in a US 6. I am going to be making the smallest size and I'm only going to need two balls. This project I'm not going to be adding sleeves to it. If I was going to add sleeves to my project I would probably add two more of these. You're probably only going to need about one and a half but I would add two just to be sure and that is for the smallest size. I haven't actually made the larger sizes. If you're making the larger sizes, and also this project is very, very similar to the other cardigan project that I have and the adult sweater. So if you've used that amount of yarn for that project, this is going to be very similar to this for this one, the amount of yarn you're going to need. So when when you've made yours, please leave how much you left it, uh, how much you used and the size that you made in the description box and that can help other people if they're curious on how much yarn they're going to use. Generally I would add between one and two balls for each size up that you go. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six different sizes and I'm using two balls for the smallest one and as you go up that's the non-sleeve so the sleeveless version I would add two balls for each size. So to start off, oh also, sorry guys, we're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye, makes it easy for sewing, and also a pair of scissors. You will also need a tape measure. This project doesn't have any buttons, but if you follow the adult size cardigan, the one with the button up version, you can learn on that one how to make buttonholes if that's what you want to do. So we're going to make a slip knot and just leave two to three inches so you can sew in your ends really well. There's also a written pattern for this project and I will be following along with that so you'll probably hear me pause just to read the pattern as we go. I'm going to be making the small I'm just going to show you the pattern. I'm going to be making this small size. My first page has nothing on it because I don't have a picture of it yet. We're going to need a garment, right? And I'm going to insert photos here to show you the garment that I used. This is a it's sort of a loose to snug fitting top on me. It's not a very loose top on me and that's how I want my cardigan to fit me. And we're gonna do some measurements. We're gonna measure the neckline and I'm gonna insert a photo now on how to do that. You're going to need to fold your measuring tape in half. You'll be able to see that on the photo. We're also going to measure from the neck down to the armpit and I'm going to put that photo in now. Our 
And once we have our measurements, we're going to put the neck measurement, we're going to ride across and we're going to put it there. And the armhole measurement where the red arrow is, we're going to write that here. And also we can measure from the top to the bottom of our garment. And this can be a guide and we're going to write that on the third line. And that will be a guide to show us how long we want our top. But we can easily adjust any of these measurements. We can adjust the armhole depth and the length of the measurements quite easy. So after we've crocheted the first row, we are going to know if this is sort of going to fit us in a, as a good fit because we're going to compare the first row of our crochet after we've done all the chains and done the first row of crochet. We're going to compare it to our neckline, and if it sort of if it uh, fits, it's around about the same size, then it's going to fit us. If it's way too small, you're going to need to go up to the next size, so you're going to need to start again. And if it's way too big, obviously it's going to be way too big for you, and you're going to need to drop down to the previous size. And it says here, some t-shirts have tight neck holes. Have a look at a few of your tops and pick a neckline you're comfortable with. You want it as a t-shirt. You don't want it really low cut like a scoop neck. You want it a t-shirt neck. So we've got different sizes here. And if you're using a DK or an 8 ply yarn, using this amount of chains is how big the opening of your neck is going to be. Because this is a cardigan, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit too big or too small because we don't need to get it over our head. If you're using a worsted weight or a 10 ply yarn, and you do that many chains, this is how big the measurement is going to come out. So then we go to our pattern and we grab our pencil or our pen and I'm going to be using a pen because I cannot see a pencil where I'm sitting. And I'm going to be following, this video will follow the small size. So that's the very first lot of numbers. You're going to compare your neckline where is it? You're going to compare your neckline to these measurements here with the yarn that you're using. So let's say my neck measurement was 55 centimeters, and I'm using oops, I'm using a worsted weight. The closest one to that is the 60 centimeter, so I'm going to go with 51 chains. So you're going to compare to whichever size that you need. You're going to circle the first one. If you use pencil, it's really good because you can rub it out later on and use the pattern again, but I just don't have a pencil, but that's fine. We're going to go across to the next lot of numbers, and you're going to circle the corresponding number. So mine is the first one, so I'm going to circle that one. Let's say you had to circle the fourth number, one, two, three, four, so you would have chose 75. When you come across here, you're going to circle the fourth number, one, two, three, and you're going to circle 16. So you just need to pick the corresponding number that you need. So I'm going to circle 24 and 10. And yours might be slightly different because you may have needed to make a different size. Okay, so and that's all we have to do. We just need to circle those first lot of numbers. I mean, you don't have to circle at all, but I find it easy to keep track of where I'm up to. Especially if you're just glancing at the pattern, because... You could look at the wrong number. So you're going to make your slip knot. does not count as a chain. The very first amount of chains, I need to do 51. You are going to do however many you need. And I'm going to do this off camera. And so pause the video. And when we come back, we're going to have all of our chains done. So I have all my chains. I have 51 all together. And you're going to have how many you need. And we're going to double crochet and... This is for all sizes into the fourth chain from the crochet hook. Do not count the loop that's on our crochet hook. One, two, three, four. So we're going to yarn over, and go into that stitch for a double crochet. And that counts as our first stitch and our chain one space. So now we're going to double crochet and I need to go into the next 10 stitches. If you're following a different size, you will follow along with your number. So we're going to go in the next lot of stitches. Now 
you are going to need the ribbon pattern for this if you are not following the small size. Just have to adjust the camera so I'm just up to my tenth stitch that I need to do I'm just gonna double check so it was double crochet in the fourth stitch so you don't count that one and that one you count from those stitches so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and you have the amount you need and we're gonna do a double crochet chain one double crochet in the next chain so it's double crochet chain one and double crochet and this is one of the increases that we use in this pattern we are also going to use a normal increase did I just say decrease before I meant increase I'm not sure what I said I meant increase for this two types of increasing double crochet chain one double crochet in the same space and also the regular increase which is just two double crochets in the same space we're going to use that for this pattern so now we want to double crochet and I'm going to go into the next 24 stitches and you are going to go into the amount that you need to do and we're going to pause the video here and complete our amount of double crochets and I'll meet you after we've done that into the next stitch we're going to work a increase and it's a double crochet chain one and double crochet and now into the next 10 stitches you may have a different number don't forget to keep checking your pattern we're just going to work a double crochet So pause the video and work your way across. So it increases there and we have 10 stitches or the amount that you need. And into our last chain, we've got one chain left, we're going to work an increase and it's the double crochet, chain one and double crochet in the same stitch. And we now have our first row complete and if you want to compare this to the the t-shirt that you've chosen to compare your sizing to you're going to lay it flat and you're going to have the big amount of crochets along the back I think I had 24 24 20, yep I had 24 they got an increase here with the chain one space and also over here you're going to fold it so that this one and this end meet up and at the moment the front of our cardigan here is missing we're going to create that as we go so it's going to look a bit odd <laughs> and then this end you're going to match up with the other chain one increase so fold that over and that is how big our cardigan is going to be so you're going to put this onto your neckline of your of your um, t-shirt and you're going to compare how big it is if it's it may not be perfect but if it's close or within you know an inch it's, it's going to be good we can work rows of single crochet well we are going to work rows of single crochet around the neckline and that will bring it in a little bit you could also work decreases around the neckline if you need to this is a very relaxed cardigan it's not sort of form fitting and um, it's not tied up around your neck so it's going to be quite relaxed and loose fitting so that's what it's going to look like so you're going to compare that onto your t-shirt I think I have a photo of when I did it with my other cardigan and I'm going to put that in there if I do now and 
it will come right across the edges here will come right across and join in the middle because it's from my other cardigan that I made but I'll put that photo in it's the shape and the size is exactly the same so now we can start row two this is the row where we need to concentrate a little bit I've taught this pattern um, basically as a test run to see if it works to some ladies and row two is where everyone got stuck they were only working from the rhythm pattern so I need to do a little bit of work on that as well but here we go so row two we're going to chain three if you have a different thing that you do for actually I'm going to chain two if you have a different thing that you normally do for that so you might do a chain three you might do an alternative double crochet you can do that there now that's perfectly fine for this pattern then we are going to work another double crochet into the same stitch so down here where that hole is there that is where we're going to work our other stitch and at the beginning and the end of each row we work two stitches into the same stitch so at the beginning it's your chain of how many you've done and a double crochet see how that's coming out that same stitch and when we get to the other end of the row we're going to work two double crochets now this here is our chain one space and we need to work an increase into there but we're going to do our double crochet chain one double crochet increase because every chain one space we come across we need to do that so into there as we get further along the distance between the chain one space and the edge is going to get a lot bigger and it's going to be a lot easier to see but it's just this first two or three rows that it looks a bit weird because it doesn't stand out very well so double crochet chain one double crochet all in that chain one space so you should have two stitches in the first which is here one two and then double crochet chain one double crochet in that space then we're going to work across and we're in our double crochets we're just going to do a double crochet it's as easy as that and going to work all the way across until we find the next chain one space another reason I've chose the worsted weight yarn for this project is I'm a bit stuck for time and if I work it in this yarn it works up a lot quicker so I'm trying to cram in a heap of things before I go away which you won't even know about because magic of YouTube <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going I've only got a couple of stitches to go there we go and we're on to the next chain one space into there we do a chain a double crochet chain one and double crochet and we do that every time we get to a chain one space so it should double crochet chain one double crochet in the next lot of double crochets we're going to work one double crochet until we get to the next chain one space so one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the chain one space pause the video and I'll meet you when we get to the next chain one space I'm up to my next chain one space so we just did the big chunk of crochets across the back and then into there you probably already know what to do but it's double crochet chain one and double crochet if you've already completed any of my cardigan patterns and even the sweater patterns you're going to find this video reasonably easy to do it's just we do a little bit different on the edges of our cardigan so now we are going to double crochet in each stitch across until we get to our next chain one space and in this case it's going to be the the turning chain from the previous row the chain one space is not going to stand out and this is where people were getting confused when I was teaching them because you, you've pretty much forgotten what you did on that very first part and it doesn't stand out and if you miss this chain one if you miss the chain one space it does all sorts of funny things to your cardigan so you're going to come across you're going to have two stitches left and this is where the chain one space is you can't see it because it doesn't really stand out 
because it's really not there because it's a turning chain so there's not actually a stitch there so double crochet in that one you're going to go into this space where my finger is with your increase and it's a double crochet chain one increase so double crochet chain one double crochet in the same space mm -hmm. got that so far so you've double crocheted in that stitch double crochet chain one double crochet in that big it's basically the space between the very last stitch and the second last stitch into the top of the last stitch which is a turning chain this is where we're going to work another increase which is just two double crochets by themselves there's no chain one in this one so at the top here we're going to work two double crochets just need to adjust my camera let me see if I can show you that one so now it looks like there's a chain one space because we've put all our stitches in there and you'll notice that the chain one spaces line up so you've got double crochet chain one double crochet and then in the last stitch there's two stitches so that's a bit that everyone was getting confused on so I do need to rewrite the pattern a little bit it we find when you find it but not at the moment so chain two if you do a chain three or an alternative double crochet then do that now now you can see that the chain one space has shifted over quite a bit there's a couple of stitches in between so we've done the first stitch we want to do another double crochet in the same stitch so back down in there and that's our very first increase of the row now we can crochet in these ones so just normal double crochet so we are just repeating the previous row but I'm going to show you this one and then you're just going to repeat it so we come up to a chain one space here double crochet chain one double crochet and we're going to double crochet in in the double crochets and our next chain one space is here so we've created this bit that's creating here this will get wider as we go along and that creates the front of our cardigan it is a bit hard to visualize what it's going to look like when you don't know so I'm just going to scoot across so pause the video and I'll meet you at the next chain one space when we get to the chain one space we're going to work a double crochet chain one and a double crochet you're about to hear a motorbike I would say because my husband just got home you may not be able to hear it on the camera pretty sure you just said that so into the next stitch we're going to work a double crochet so you can probably see a pattern forming now into your chain one spaces you're doing your increase that has your chain one space and then in your double crochets you're just working double crochets so that's easy peasy so pause the video and I'll meet you at the next chain one space so when we get to our next chain one space we're going to work double crochet chain one and double crochet and again into our double crochets along here we're going to work a double crochet and I'll meet you at the next chain one space so we have the next chain one space and you probably already know what to do we're going to double crochet chain one and double crochet then we're going to work across here and you can see we have three stitches left one two three so we're going to double crochet in the next two and in the very last stitch that's where we work our increase we want to put two stitches in that very last one so you'll have your increase with your chain one one two 
three, four stitches. And we want to repeat this row. So it's chain two. I find a chain two works better for me than a chain three. I find chain three too loose. You're going to put a double crochet in the same stitch and then you're going to work across and putting in your increases as you get to your chain one spaces. And we're going to repeat that row until we have the second, oh that was a bit close, the second measurement where it says armhole where the red arrow was, so from here to there. We're going to keep going until we have that measurement and I know that mine is nine inches because I've made quite a few of these things <laughs> through the practicing. Mine's nine inches. I'm not sure what my neck is. I think it's around, I think it was like 50 something. I think it was 56. It's centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. So we need to keep crocheting until we've got nine inches. And we measure that from, this is our beginning row here. We're going to measure from any one of these, doesn't matter which one you measure, you're going to measure from here and then just measure up along your chain one spaces until you get to your measurement. In the next video clip you're going to see this bit complete and you'll see how big I've made mine. So pause the video and continue on and I'll meet you back when we have the measurement that we need. Here you can see the shape of mine so yours should look like that. And if I measure from this the eyelet rose or the increase when we did our chain one. If I measure down there, it's up to nine inches, which is 23 centimeters.